Why Feminists Deny Gender's Existence. Hey, it's Prince of Queens, and if you've spent any time investigating feminist blogs, university campuses, or interacting with contemporary feminists in any small capacity, you've undoubtedly noticed that they demand countless double standards in relation to males and females. Men can't disagree with women without being accused of mansplaining, trigger warnings in safe spaces are obviously infantilizing, and women take time off of work due to microaggressions in high-paying tech positions, like the woman who took a month off of work at Apple when somebody wrote, hide your kids, hide your wife, in a company chat. But then, of course, at the same time, in spite of all that clear and obvious emphasis on women being completely different to men and needing special protections from not just the physical dangers of the world, but the mildest of emotional disturbances, in spite of all of that, it's also feminists that claim that gender is just a social construct. It's rather odd, really, that we have the radical feminist or gender-critical feminist turf crew whose argument seems to be that gender is a social construct, so therefore it is impossible to change one's gender because gender doesn't exist, so you can't change gender because reasons. There's part of me that feels like I am an inadequate YouTuber for not taking apart the illogic of this train of thought piece by piece, but ultimately I currently find it tedious to even talk about it, and I choose to believe that my audience will be with me on that one. So how the hell are feminists simultaneously claiming that gender is a social construct and that gender basically doesn't exist, and yet clearly their actions speak louder than their words, and the obvious fact that they are also demanding all of this special treatment for women contradicts these sentiments? How did this happen? I think a lot of people would say that it has something to do with transgender activism, but I think that they'd be wrong. Because that's mostly a new development, and historically, feminists were not at all kind to transgender people, which is a sentiment that hasn't gone away to this day and seems to be growing. No, what I think really is going on here is that it ties back to patriarchy theory, like basically everything about feminism. Because patriarchy theory is the big lie that all feminist fraud is built upon. It's how feminists have justified collecting billions of dollars a year from taxpayers. If you want to know more details about how exactly this fraudulent empire based on false pretenses came into being, I need to once again suggest listening to Sargon of Akkad's interview with Aaron Pidsey, who founded the world's first domestic abuse refuge, link in the description. Long story short, her shelter was hijacked because she refused to say that only men can be violent, and the people who hijacked the shelter she paid for were crooked feminist ideologues of the same variety that believe in patriarchy theory and basically went on to get the entire Western world to bend the knee to feminism. Patriarchy theory is wacky in the way that it not only claims that all men collude either consciously or subconsciously with all other men to oppress all women, but it adds the extra dimension of claiming that this is not the natural way that cultures tended to develop evolutionarily, but rather some sort of societal sickness that has infected basically all of civilization. In the mind of somebody that believes in patriarchy theory, our civilizations should either completely equally be run by males and females in all top leadership and earning positions, or even be set up as a matriarchy instead, where females are the supreme rulers of civilization. Clearly, this notion of a matriarchal utopia is supremely illogical when you visualize it. If you look into the fact that there are exceedingly few females that aspire to working 80-hour weeks 
as a politician or a CEO, mainly due to familial priorities that most women have. However, although countless people I have interacted with as individuals have legitimately swallowed the blue pill so thoroughly that they honestly believe that we should strive for this matriarchal utopia, I truthfully don't believe that the high-ranking women that are raking in money from Feminism Incorporated's payroll truly desire this outcome. And why would they? Why would they want to install a matriarchy and thus have to actually work hard at running society themselves? As it stands now, these same feminists get to complain about the fact that women on average work and thus earn less money than men and compose less positions in government because they tend not to run, and they use all of that to provide evidence that women are supposedly suffering from a power imbalance in our society and that power imbalance justifies the existence of feminist advocacy groups and justifies the fact that they get a lot of money. Not only does it justify the existence of professional radical feminist activists that get paid to perpetuate fraudulent gender statistics and make sure that things like the Duluth model of domestic violence law stays in place everywhere they can in the West, but the gender imbalance in top earners ensures complete and utter parasitic status to feminist organizing. As long as feminists can point fingers at men for being more high achieving on average than women, they can conveniently blame it all on discrimination, which justifies giving women free handouts and justifies feminist activists getting paid for procuring these free handouts for women. But of course, the whole system would collapse without those high earning, high achieving men. But what is the biggest threat to this hustle? What is the chink in the armor of this specific racket? When will the jig be up and feminists will no longer be able to capitalize financially by blaming all of these imbalances between the genders on patriarchy? Well, that's fairly obvious. All people would have to do would be to point out the biological differences between males and females, like what got James Damore fired from Google. If people realized that there's actual biological reasons that have inspired men to be more likely to work 80-hour weeks, patriarchy theory makes little to no sense. And so, in order to protect their money coming directly from the government every year, while ensuring that as many gullible men and women keep enabling them to rob the Western world blind, professional feminists have propagated the myth that gender basically doesn't exist, and that the omnipotent force of patriarchy is the only thing that caused everything to be the way that it is. Thus, the worldview of the radical feminist became that gender is essentially imaginary, to ensure that nobody would jeopardize their free-flowing gravy train of dollar signs, which is why the radical feminist turf types are at such odds with transgender activists these days. It's not simply the notion that radical feminists are worried that they might have to share resources with transgender women, which they certainly are worried about, and supposed gender traitor transgender males they don't like them either. Rather, the very concept of a transgender person undermines their entire money-making scheme that is based on a fraudulent gender paradigm in which gender supposedly doesn't really exist. In the current year, gender is not supposed to be determined in any way by one's biological sex. Also, men supposedly earn more money than women because they are conditioned to be domineering as a result of the invisible force called patriarchy. Yet, at the same time, anybody can go ahead and change their gender back and forth. Obviously, 
this is complete and utter insanity because it was all based on massive corruption and con artistry to begin with, and it has caused a massive amount of internal strife amongst the feminist ranks, which is why the whole turf debate is even an issue to begin with. But I hope I've given you some insight into how it works. Clearly, from their actions, feminists don't want to claim that gender is just a social construct because they would prefer to endlessly demonize men and say that all men are rapists naturally. However, without the argument that gender is just a social construct, they would have no leg to stand on in terms of claiming that patriarchy is the only thing responsible for the imbalance in females as top earners and high-ranking politicians. So they basically have to say this, even though they don't want to but they have to say so to get paid. Drop me a comment and stay tuned.